just go get Kane. It's it seems like the most obvious thing to do for United. I feel like they should have done it last season, the season before. You guys have paid way more money for way more crappy people. Just go get Kane, get him for his two, three years or whatever is left in this thing. He's gonna give you he's gonna bag goals, he's gonna drop deep. Bruno yeah, will probably have to start sitting back a little bit more or start looking for a new club because that's a, that's one person on your team that I just think is incredibly overrated. Who? I Bruno. Oh, okay. I do not like attacking midfielders who do not look to pass. It's the craziest thing. I'm like, you should be facilitating. Um but to me, it's like United is just missing a striker. To me, Rashford, uh, Martial is not it. Uh, you can even, I would even put Rashford, Martial to me. You can fight on the wings with, with all the, all your other thousands of wingers that you guys have. <laughs> um, but yeah. to me, it's just like that's where the massive hole is. I was saying number six for a while. You finally stole Casemiro from us. Well, you didn't steal him, but you took him. Yeah. Um, but it's then now move. it's just like it's just that one last hole I feel like to get United over the top, and then I think guys will be much much closer. But hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Treble Talk Podcast. We've got an exciting show for you today. Well, um, we've also got the the usual cast: uh, myself, Jay Socials. Uh, we've got Jeff from the House. We've got Eve. And we've also got a special guest in the name of Kells. Uh, Kells is a long life Arsenal fan and Real Madrid fan, just like Jeff here. And you know what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the biggest game of the weekend uh, in Arsenal versus Manchester United. Wow, what a game. Uh, this is a historical matchup um, that hasn't been the greatest matchup in the last few years. Uh, but this season was uh, this last game was definitely uh, one for the books. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that. And we're also going to be talking about the upcoming game between Arsenal and Manchester City. Uh, I believe it's in the FA Cup. And we'll be touching on other developing stories around uh, Europe as well. So I just wanted to hope everyone's doing well today. Uh, Kels, uh, thank you for being here with us. Uh, it's always nice to have a guest here. So hope you're doing well, and uh, we'll get the show started. Yeah, thanks for having me. Nice to see you guys. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, yeah, so let's open the floor. Obviously, uh, we had the game Arsenal versus Manchester United at the Emirates Stadium. Uh, the score was 3-2 uh, to the Gunners, unfortunately. So I don't know who wants to go first. I guess I'll open the floor to Kells. Um, so what was your opinion on that game? And um, are there any takeaways uh, from the game? Um, so my opinion was, first of all, it was like a, a really good game. It was like, I think I saw something, I think it's like between the first goal and the second goal. And, this, and then to the, between the first equalizer and the second equalizer, in between each of the goals was exactly six minutes and 18 seconds, which was hilarious. But it just kind of spoke to how back-to-back -back it was. Um, I was very impressed with Arsenal. I felt like they were on the front foot from jump. Um, I know United had some suspensions, which I think really impacted the game, mainly catch them there. And then your injury problems up front. But top side, top points, I think Arsenal, I think the most impressive thing is that they, or we continue to deliver against big teams, which has been an Achilles heel for a couple of years. And I think... From a Manchester perspective, I think it were equally impressive. I just feel like there's just some significant like holes in <laughs> in your team. Um, yeah, like your right winger, I'm not sure what he's doing. Um, Anthony, and then obviously Anthony, yeah, and then your the hole in the midfield is I think there's just too large a drop off from Casemiro to McTominay or Fred, and I think those are. Those are my those are my key takeaways. But I uh, love the game. Haven't watched. Haven't looked forward to that matchup for a while because usually we just get spanked. But so, this was a nice <laughs> different change of taste. Yeah, and how uh, how impressed were you with Saka's performance? Uh, that first goal was wow. That was I guess he was basically doing the same. It was basically the same goal as Rashford uh, with the same celebration. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Both those goals were screamers. They were they were both like just pure quality. Um, 
probably more impressive for England uh, at this point because they feel like they just had their formula now in the front. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Saka has just been consistent. So it's not even like, it, 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 it's, it's just like this whole season, he's just had my job dropped. Uh, Rashford's goal I thought was actually probably better mm -hmm. just because of how quick it was and like the lack of back lift when he shoots is crazy. Um, but yeah, I thought those two goals were like contending, contending for like at least top like seven goals in the season uh, so yeah. far. It's interesting, Josh. You you ask uh, how, how how were you impressed with um, Saka? I think the difference between Saka because I agree with everything Kel uh, Kel Kelza said. The difference between Saka and and Rashford though throughout the whole game was fitness. You could see that Rashford was tired. He was leggy and he didn't have the the um, the quickness he had in the, in the first half, even I would say the first thirty minutes, whereas Saka was consistently giving Shaw problems down the left ring. Um, well, Shaw's left wing, um, well, Saka's yeah. right, yeah, and that's something and we gotta talk about. <laughs> and the interesting thing was that um, how many fouls Shaw got away with um, really bothered me. But you know, you know, I guess it, it is that type of a game. The ref managed it very well. All in all, the ref managed it very well. Um, what did disappoint me was Partey's performance, and it, it's 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 kind of been the case the last few a few games where he's been a little bit too long on the ball. And when he has someone like Odegaard ahead of him and to the right of him, he needs to be a little bit quicker with his decision making. Um, and I, I, I felt like I felt like that goal. I mean, that goal, actually, goal was was his fault. He was trying to do something that he really should not have tried to do. Um, and and cause cause the quick counter attack, but yeah, I think I think ultimately Rashford needs to work on his fitness. I don't know if it's if it's his fitness that's the problem, or if it was just his you know United ha had to defend so much because like Kalechi said, there was a massive hole, uh, massive drop in quality from when you go from Casemiro to McTominay, and so you needed your your um, your wingers who ended up being wide midfield players, um, and I think that hurt Anthony. Anthony is young. Yeah. I, I don't think I, I I think it's it's unfortunate that Jaden Sancho is still recovering mentally, um, but you really do need um, someone of, of that quality to come back if you're going to be able if you're going to compete um, for for the title or at least for 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 second place with Manchester City for the rest of the season. Yeah, I think you make you both make great points. I think the the fatigue, I think the tiredness is. I think that has to do with uh, like we had talked about in the group chat. Um, United had played three games in the last seven days, That's right? True. We had played the weekend, uh, Crystal Palace midweek, and then Arsenal. So um, I can definitely see where and, um, Rashford has played all 90. And you also have to remember, um, Rashford also had a knock against um, City, which we thought he was going to be out for the uh, for quite some time. But right. he was able to finish that game. So I think it might. we did see uh, players um, being a bit tired. And you're right. I think there is that drop off between. Uh, uh, there's a drop off from Casemiro, all the way, um, and then you bring on McTominay. That's the one thing I didn't. It was kind of weird because McTominay hasn't played in a couple of fixtures now, and it's been. Uh, they even said it. Fred is the most used sub in the, in the, in the, in the league right now. So the fact that Fred had been coming on, Fred had two. Um, he's had some pretty good games leading up to Arsenal and the fact that he decided that he was going to switch it up and put McTominay on his own, right? It, it didn't really make sense. The, um, that selection did not make sense. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, we still, we're still dealing with um, the issues from last season with possession. Um, every time we play a team that is great at possession, a lot of our deficiencies um, start to show. You know, like I've said it, um, I would have preferred some great, great news though. to me. Great news to me right? for our Barcelona game. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I said it great didn't news to me, though, right? If yeah. you show <laughs> position, then yeah, it's, it sounds great for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but that's what it is, right? Because, you know, over in that game, I would have rather seen Bruno um, on the wing, right? But we didn't really have too many options for the middle uh, in terms of, and then Ericsson, like I had told you guys last week. Uh, we need somebody to replace him because he looks tired. Um, once he hits like the 60 and once the hour mark, um, he starts getting tired. And um, another thing too is when you play midfield, when you don't have much of the ball, 
you're going to get tired a lot quicker, right? Oh, yeah. Because you're basically chasing shadows. You're going back and forth, back and forth without much creativity. So, um, yeah, definitely, I definitely get your point on there. Um, really quick before I, before Eve can um, add his two cents, Anthony, I'm still giving him a bit of time because I'm beginning to see that he's very similar to Sancho. He's not a direct play, uh, player that just goes at defenders and you know takes on five different guys. Um, I, I believe he's uh, he's someone that has to feed off all the players. Like you, when you look at Sancho, they're always looking for that give and go. They're always looking for someone to build up. But when you have the likes of Rashford, I love Rashford, but Rashford is very um, – he's not really the greatest – he's not the greatest team player. If you ever know, every time he gets the ball, he puts his head down and he's trying to go for it right he's trying to drive with the ball and sometimes you need a player who can do a bit of both uh look up and pick out your teammates and i think that's something that we do lack um in the likes of your rashfords uh bruno tried but bruno is more of a long range passer but when it's a, a quick give and go bruno is not the greatest at it because he's always looking to uh to switch the play so when you have that combination i can see where anthony could start feeling isolated because there's never there's no one to overlap, uh, and I think also Dallow not being uh, not yeah. playing is also impacting his game. Because before Dallow got injured, Anthony and Dallow had this overlap system going. Versus Juan Bissaka is still um, he's still not the greatest going up front. Like his attacking game is still not the greatest. So I think this is where we're having a bit of lag on the right wing because Anthony gets the ball. He's isolated all the time, and he doesn't really have too many outlets. So that's my take on Anthony. Uh, so, yeah, Eve, uh, what was your thoughts on the game? Uh, well, listen, it was a great game. I loved it. Long time I've seen Arsenal come in for this. I'm really happy it happened. Uh, top of the league, clear points. I actually find it. I actually find it quite interesting that you know we're talking about fatigue and et cetera. But we said it in the last show that. You know, make or break for Manchester United is is if they can get yeah. healthy and if they can just keep going. And this is it. This is what it is. Make or break. They clearly show they're not it. Um, they're getting there, but they're still not it. You keep talking about the midfield and et cetera. You have great midfield, just middle table midfield for the Prem, not top elite midfield. And Casemiro is cl <laughs> clearly missing. That's, that's just what it is. I, it, oh. it is. I mean, Ericsson is not in his best. McTominay, there's a reason he chose him. That means he must have performed well in training versus Fred. There, there was a reason he put him there on top of maybe being the prodigy son that everyone's talking about in Manchester United. <laughs> he was there and he just showed again. It's not it. I think the biggest mistake you guys made is putting that striker. I think Rashford should have been a striker since start since day one. Thank you. Rashford being on the left didn't make sense. He scored, yeah, but it didn't make sense. You guys put a guy that is not adapted to the team yet and not adapted to the to the actual Prem way for Manchester United, specifically the demands of the coach. I think Rashford, it's his team. It's clear that he's leading the team. He's putting everything on his shoulder, and him and Casemiro are really leading it. So uh, Casemiro being out and Rashford being on the left uh, made me question. And you look at Arsenal on the flip side, 57% possession versus 42 men United, and you had they had 25 shots on target. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, that means that you went in strong, no offense, you got lucky with some of the goals, and then you just held back. It's just the pace wasn't there. And as I said, it was make or break. And Manchester United, you can see it turn the tide with Teg. Um, Ten Hag is, is, is clearly making a turn of the tide. I don't understand why he chose Anthony. I think Anthony got very cocky in the beginning. Now he's, you're starting to see what he is, which is a little bit of a mirror of Sancho. And you're like, well, make or break, or else you're going to be like Cristiano Ronaldo and you're going to be sold quicker than the end of the sentence. So <laughs> I think I think Manchester needs to keep doing what they need. Um, but, you know, you need to start looking at upgrading that midfield. And, and if, I were to, if I were you, I'd start uh, looking at uh, Juventus that has uh, some serious uh, minus 15 points possession issues. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're going to start that. selling. <laughs> they're going to they're going to start selling some midfield over there. They've got some great cores just down the road, you know, Manoki and so forth. They, Kiesa, Kiesa would be a guy I'd go for and put Rashford uh, as a striker and just yep. not go for Kane. I think Kane needs to stay in uh, lack of ambition spurs so yeah that's, that's where I <laughs> wow so um you guys actually do feel like the what's his name Weghurst 
is not, uh, Oh, he's great. He's, not, he's yeah. a top striker, I don't man. I can't name. wait for him to win his battle, though. I can't wait. I mean, I'm just can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. You know what? He kind of gave me an Igalo vibe. This, you know, he gave me is, that. Is this Igalo the Dutch Ballon d'Or, or is this the uh, the the original Golden Ball? <laughs> Which, but to be fair, I think it's I think it's I think it's the one they give in uh, Division Three. Uh, what is it? The, the, the bronze ball? Or <laughs> what, what's, but 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 uh, Josh, like we we asked you, I asked you this question last time. I didn't really get an answer. Like, what what is your take on Workhorse and why why him? I mean, of all the strikers. That were available. We talked about Juventus dropping 15 points, um, and 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 Vlaovic being there. He, you know, Arsenal went for him, didn't get him. Um, you know, he said he wanted to stay. I mean, what what what's going on? Why workers? I don't know. And and what's your take so, on him? Do you to think be fair, he is to be, honored, what you to be to be honest? Do you know how I knew about that signing? It was during his first game. I was like, oh, wait, wow. what? <laughs> This signing definitely went uh, it went under the radar for sure, but he he didn't have a bad World Cup for the Netherlands, right? And two, I think Whoa, you know. Hold on, hold on. I just want to I just want to correct something. He he was a substitute in the World well, Cup. Let's not say he had a he had he to have a bad World performed. Cup. He, he played his role. I can't wait. I can't wait He's for his battle. Starting. I can't but wait. He's starting for you. Okay, but to be fair though, like um, I think he can come good. He's only he's 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 a loanee, right? So it's only to the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Um, it was definitely he's on the cheap right now. I'm hearing that United doesn't have money, and this is why the Glazers. Oh, I did not know he was out. a loanee, so that that actually puts into perspective. So, oh yeah, it is a loanee. No, it's not. No, it's not a permanent deal. No, Whoa. that's yeah. I think there will be having more outrage, or there will be people who have to talk <laughs> more about it. Um, but I think yeah, overall, but wouldn't like, it made wouldn't it have made more sense size. to get Tony from from Brentford? You know, as a but like we talked about, that. Tony, Tony is going. Uh, Tony is going somewhere else. Right? Uh, <laughs> he's going to Paris. <laughs> Wait, is that PSG? No, 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 he's, or? he's uh, is that PSG or? Yeah, no, he got golden caught match? up. He got no, not but not but not golden. They're brass. He's uh, he got caught up <laughs> in the betting, right? So. Oh, he's, uh, he's going to the actual jail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Golden. That's why a low oh, deal would be great. No, no strings yeah. attached. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, I guess we got to find a new strike for my FPL. Oh, <laughs> That's unfortunate. No. He had a good – he had a good – well, they're waiting for a verdict that should come out soon. But uh, so that's why kind of everybody. Candle, then? Oh, that's why everybody yeah. held off, eh? That's why everybody held off, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I was going to say, man, such a talent. Like, what is he still doing in, uh, at Brentford? But I think overall, so far, I'm not really disappointed with his output. Because if you notice the goals that we've scored with him playing, it's, it's he has the number nine movement. And this is something that we've lacked in the box. The if you notice the rash for a goal, um, over and against Crystal Palace, the goals that we scored, uh, his movement drags about two or three defenders with him, which has been creating that space for Rashford to be able to drive into that box. So it's like I said last week, um, a lot of times I know we look at number nines to score goals all the time, but you also have to look at what is that player giving to the rest of a team. So far, Rashford is scoring the goals. Uh, but I think his movement and his link-up play, um, I think they've been all right. It hasn't been out of this world, but I think it's been all right. Could really? we have gotten a better striker? I, Are you I, could have not, I did not know that we changed the definition of a striker to movement only. It's it's really refreshing. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but as long as yeah. you have a striker you know, scoring he's goals. He's he being so facetious, man. I can't tell the difference between <laughs> the actual like, comments. I, and I'm so play. happy. I didn't know I was recruiting for my club movements <laughs> instead of a goal scorer. I'm, I'm so happy. I'm... <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, Eve, it's not it's our just... fault. Uh, Barcelona has to call the free uh, agents, man. It's not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> Yet we're still broke. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know how it happens. It's just like, hey, we're still broke. It's like, the, uh, at, this rate, think... at this rate, I'll get my, my neighbor for free. <laughs> it's like, maybe he, he's got good movement. He's got good movement. <laughs> well, I think to 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 uh, this is I want I want to caveat this aggressively by saying I in no way am I making this an actual man for man comparison in any way, shape, or form. But it's the same as like when when Ronaldo was in in Madrid, where it's like yeah, he was getting all the goals, but Benzema was just basically moving the entire defense away. Mm. Now they're not like I said, Rashford's not Ronaldo, and 
this workhorse, workhorse or however you say his name, yeah, is he, definitely not he's Benzema. Not workhorse. He's not Benzema's <laughs> left <laughs> toe, even. But um, but I can kind of see that, and this is like a great segue because I feel like I've been saying this for two years now, and I know Eve's going to hate this take, but just go get Kane. It's it seems like the most obvious thing to do for United. I feel like they should have done it last season, the season before. You guys have paid way more money for way more crappy people. Just go get Kane, get him for the two, three years or whatever is left in this thing. He's going to give you, he's going to bag goals. He's going to drop deep. Bruno yeah, will probably have goals. to start sitting back a little bit more or start looking for a new club because that's, a, that's one person on your team that I just think is incredibly overrated. Who? I, Bruno. Oh, okay. I do not like attacking midfielders who do not look to pass. It's the craziest thing. I'm like, you should be facilitating. Um, but to me, it's like United is just missing a striker. To me, Rashford, uh, Martial is not it. Uh, you can even, I would even put Rashford, Martial to me. You can fight on the wings with all the, all your other thousands of wingers that you guys have. <laughs> um, but yeah. to me, it's just like that's where the massive hole is. I was saying number six for a while. You finally stole Casemiro from us. Well, you didn't steal him, but you took him. Yeah. Um, but then now move. it's just like it's just that one last hole I feel like to get United over the top, and then I think guys will be much much closer. But yeah, I think the workhorse thing to your point is just like he was cheap. Ten yeah. Hag just likes to rehire people that he has worked with before, clearly, and this guy falls into that process. So it's just like hey, run through this wall. Oh, he said Eric said it. I'm running type of thing. Yeah. Um, but I think that's that's kind of the driving force. I, I think you're just aiming for I, I, top four. Sorry, go ahead. I don't. I don't disagree with Kane going to Man United. I just think that Spurs have a better squad. They just lack a coach, and I just think when, that if what, he stays, when have they last they done a, a good coach though. They yeah, that's the question. They've yeah. had. They've, they, that's the thing. If they have a good coach, I think they would make top four and probably even top two with this. But current. who's a good coach to yeah. go to Spurs? That's the question. Well, I mean, question. that's a good question. Then, then we're going to go to like down the line. Is it Zidane? You know, is it Tuchel? Is it you know wh where are we going? But they need a good coach because they have a good squad. Son, when he's on fire, he can be lethal. I mean, he can be unstoppable. Kane, when he's on fire, can be lethal. The problem is they bad coaching, terrible signings, random signings sometimes. But they have a good squad. They tend to have a good squad. I think I agree. I, like I Man can't United, agree with that at all. Their midfield men, is men, worse than Manchester United's. Their midfield, oh, in fact, is one because, of the worst. That's it. Take Chelsea. away Casemiro. Take huh? away Casemiro. <laughs> take away Casemiro. <laughs> if you take away Casemiro, their midfield is just like is just like uh, Tottenham. But Casemiro is on United, right? Correct. And so oh, sorry, no, 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 hold on. And Ericsson, who used to be a Tottenham oh. player. Ericsson is better. Yeah, I would say Ericsson is the only crazy. person. The only person who I, who 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 is better than um than who's better than the next best player midfield player in United, which I think would be Ericsson, would be Hoybier. That's it. Hoybier. That's it. The rest of them are garbage. I'll give you that. Conte is playing a system that the, that he, the players he has does not work. Who does not work for them? Um, but I I just. I, I can't let that slide that, that you think Benton that Core is good. pretty good. Though. Who? Benton Core is pretty good. Benton He's been Core, injured. Uh, by what I said, I think, I think Spurs as a whole is a better team. Wow. Honestly. You think they're deep? You think their back line think is better, better than, team, than Manchester no, no, United? If I, had the, Manchester, if I look at Manchester United, I'm like, I can only name two players that really go on fire there. Really. Okay. Okay. Well, we don't need I, to get into we, we, okay. we agree Tottenham sucks and we agree United needs help. Name me another player outside of Rashford and, and Casemiro. Varane. That you see as a, a top player right now? No, no, in no, no. I'm compare, comparative, comparing to Tottenham. Varane, no one is better. Okay. Martinez, nobody is better. Luke Martinez Shaw, was nobody, awful. No, no, I'm just comparing team. against Tottenham. Yeah, no yes, is better look at the team. From the World Cup, but... Yeah, I I just don't I just think Spurs if they had the right coach they'd be they'd be in the top four right now. There's no but, there's no I right mean. coach though. That's the problem. I know I, I know that's that's the problem. Which which Luke leaves? already said he's not you going. Know what? To, said he's not going to Tottenham. Which leaves like, which Tottenham leaves menu as the Tottenham most. Tottenham has uh, Kane and Son. They're like a powerhouse, right? Like United, yes, we don't have the Kane and Son. But when you really look at it though, like Son and Rashford are not that. They're not that like worlds apart, right? In terms of their output 
and with that skill level or whatever it is. Yes, maybe Sun might have a global, like a bigger name just because of um, various factors. But I think overall, yeah, we might be missing that Kane kind of striker. But I can't, going down, even from the goalkeeper, Hugo Lloris, I would take David De Gea over Lloris. Oh, definitely. Right? And then if you go down the team, I, I see what you're saying about Tottenham, but I think, I don't know, I think we're a better team than Tottenham. I agree 100%. I, I, I don't team. think Tottenham has a good team. I think Tottenham has a lot of holes. And it's and yeah, their coach, they can bring in a good coach and you'll fix it. Just like Ten Hag is, current, is currently doing that with United. Um, I... Uh, but I, I, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not here to discuss how what Tottenham needs because I don't think anybody here on this call cares about Tottenham getting better. They should just keep doing what they're doing. They should keep, they should keep it up. I'm liking it. <laughs> <laughs> more, more sarcasm. I can't tell. For a second, I was like, is he serious? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's funny because he is serious as an Arsenal fan. Um, but just, 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 just before we segue into into UEFA's um, plugging of FFP um, um, holes, I think I, I don't I don't think we're watching the same games with Workhorse. Workhorse did not contribute to your Crystal Palace goal. Let's, don't, don't get it twisted. He was in fact even deeper than Bruno, which goes back to Kletchy's point. Bruno is selfish, and Bruno does not act as a midfield player. A midfield player is supposed to be one that connects, and is supposed to be the one that connects with the ball not with dribbling. He sees a player making a run. He'd rather use that player as a decoy. Same thing that Isco was doing for Real Madrid. And then he, and then he would just use it as decoy, try to dribble through and then get tripped up or else something else would happen. And I agree. Anthony needs more help because that connection was supposed to be Bruno who was supposed to making that connection with Anthony, but he wasn't. Bruno is not a cam. And even as a cam, Bruno does not do his job. That goal that goal um, that was in Crystal Palace, that was, uh, oh, was it offside? Let's be very honest. And if, 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 if it was a year ago, Rashford would have, would not have, would not have, um, Bruno would not have given that ball to, um, to, to Rashford. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that, that, that little thing that they had, it probably would have been a mess up and it would, it would not, would not have turned into a goal, right? United needs to realize this is Rashford's team. Let's be very honest. This is Rashford's team, and you need to build around Rashford. And there are people that you need to bring in, and I 100% agree, Kane is that person. I don't understand. I don't, he'll give you 100 goals in the next three, four years he has. Guarantee he'll give you 100 goals. But it's the and cost, man, though, for Kane. I don't What's know if you want to be spending that much on a 30-year-old. Man, what did you spend on Jaden Sancho? What is he giving you? But Jaden Sancho is like 22 years old. Yeah, There's but the return of the investment... It's still like it, this is like a sure bet. It's like it's because the thing about young players is like it can work or it cannot work, right? You can like it's like what Madrid's doing right now with the aggressive midfield, you're massing all these like seventeen year olds and all these. I mean, they can work or they cannot. Like, look at Vinny. Look compared to Rodrigo, right? It like, can go one or look. When we did the same thing with Esco in the last round, Esco and. Uh, Sabios and right. all these guys and uh, what's the this is like what's the diminutive right mid? I just couldn't stand whenever Asensio? I saw him. Sorry, Asensio. No, no, no. The sorry, the right back. Anyhow, but it's like sometimes you, you oh, get to. Oh, know what Kava has old. Um, <laughs> yeah, Adrizola, Adrizola. <laughs> I couldn't stand that guy. But it's like it, it could work oh, or it could not work, and you're just doling out all this money on all these people. So, but it's like if you have somebody that's as guaranteed as Kane to come plug a hole, you just need him for like it's like what Barca did with with um Lundowski. with Loa. It's like, I mean, you're top of the table now. And like, yeah, La Liga's not the greatest that it is now. But it's like at some point, if you need results now, you can have a mix. It doesn't, you're, all your purchases for 100, you, to me, Kane for 100 mil 100. at 30 is worth more than Anthony at 100 mil mm -hmm. at however old he is, 22, yeah. 21 or whatever it is. He should really be cheaper. <laughs> if Kane's so expensive at 100 mil, he is. should not be 100 mil. <laughs> That's and you can get you can get Kane pretty cheap right now. You can definitely get Kane for 100 mil because he's good. His contract. Well, did he just sign a new contract? Is Kane keep signing new? Uh, no, 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 no. He's like he's 18 months left. He hasn't yeah. he hasn't renewed. Right oh, now okay. is the time to go in. Literally in this this summer, if anything happens at Manchester United, it's that, and nothing else happens, you are getting guaranteed top four next season. Guaranteed. 
if you bring in Kane, Kane also has no Kane. options. The only it's like Bayern, but I'm sure if Manu comes in to rival yeah, Bayern, he'd rather, he'd rather go, stay yeah. in England and Bayern will go than go to Bayern. Bayern is going for him. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> I think if, if I were if I were Kane versus <laughs> Manu, I'd probably choose Bayern. I mean that team is stacked as well. Nah. That's that's a that's a no brainer. That's a no. But you're you're, you're an international Kane, guy. Kane, no. like, legacy. I don't know if yeah, he's an international guy. He, he, if he wants to. If he wanted legacy, he wouldn't have signed 18 contracts in a row at Spurs. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, the same point. Thing, it's the same thing with uh, Mbappe. If enough people put pressure on you, you're going to feel this ownership, this like, oh, I owe something to this club. Because Tottenham betted on him for so many years when he was just getting ankle. He's going to be 30, ankles. Jeff. He's going to be so 30. You got to balance it out, man. Like, take I, – I was – I was for me, I was like, Kane is great. He's glass. And now Kane has come good in the last four or five years. And even in, in international and club, he's come good. And for me, he need we, we need to pay, but like people need to pay him the respect that he deserves. Tottenham is not the club for him, and he and, and EPL is where he should he should stay, hundred percent. I, I I think I think if he goes, it's good for Bayern if he goes. Bayern is going to be fine regardless because Bayern is. But of course, but that's that's the point. That's the point. If he wants a title and he wants to win something. Before he retires, and Manchester may be a risky move for him if he assesses it. Outside of being proud for your country, I mean, if I were him and I, it, I, don't I think was he really ambitious, I think well, he, wants, he, wants really, he wants the he wants Premier League. League. Yeah, because he he's not going to look at the. I don't even think he cares about Champions League right now. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I don't really know. I, I know that Spurs is his big love, and that's why he's done like 18 contracts in a row. But it comes at a point like if he really wants a title. And Manchester United might be a risky move because there's no guarantee. If he goes over there, it's it could be the same thing as Spurs, or it could be better. It's it's a risk. It's a gamble, right? You don't know what it's going to be next year. You don't know how the team's going to be. If he wants to win something and actually Bayern goes for him, yeah, I, I would be probably tempted by Bayern to win something. But if it's about staying in the Prem, I've done Spurs for 20 years. I think it's time to move on. Like I, as much as I, it is what it is. Agree, agree, yeah. agree, agree, and disagree. But let's see. I think I think yeah, if Kane were in English, I don't. I I get. I, I see both points, but I think um, I think Kane. Watch he surprises us and goes to Paris Saint Germain. That would be like, oh <laughs> my god! He surprises and all of a sudden we're I like, and Saudi Kane, Arabia. the new yeah. striker. <laughs> what? What? What happened here? No, I don't <laughs> see Kane doing well in that culture, man. I don't know with Mbappe and I guess Mbappe will have to leave at that point. I don't think you can have. I don't know if like know. Kane will work with the likes of Neymar, and I think no, that's Kane, like, that's Kane, Kane will sign an eighteen-year contract. With him? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's not get it twisted. The problem isn't Kane. The problem is is the other people. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's that six-year contract he signed, he shouldn't have. Ooh, the UEFA yeah. should have banned. They should have banned the the six-year thing at that point because they just got him at like. 24 six year deal. Here's all this money, and then he was just like blind. Potts was still there. Everything was yeah. like, like roses, oh, and yeah. then boom. <laughs> yeah, because they had reached the uh, the finals of the Champions League as well, right? Yeah. That was I think that was best, the season best Champions League final of our generation, guys. Was <laughs> Tottenham versus Liverpool? My that's God. the one final that I I still don't remember. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Typical EPL, EPL yeah, Champions League finals are so exhilarating. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just to uh, before we wrap up this, um, so for the Arsenal fans in the building, um, I guess take away like where do you, where do you guys see Arsenal now? Are you are you guys feeling more confident to say that this is yours to lose, or do you, you still feel that Chelsea? I mean, City is still in this race. City is um, always in this race on. till the last day. The difference is, I said it. I said it last week. If we win, if we win, not a, not a draw. If we kick four points, we it's ours to lose, and I still believe that. The fact that was a big game to win. The FA Cup, I could care less about. Um, it's the title, the the uh, league title is everything for me. If this guy goes and burn and burns the legs of the people who played on the weekend, I mean, he could play some some of them against City. I, for me, that would be useless. Um, you you know, like there's there's now we have we have a good couple of games where it should be a lot a bit a bit easier. Um, whereas City doesn't have City has City has to play um, the, the top six in the next uh, couple of weeks, and then also City has Champions League. Arsenal doesn't. Arsenal has Europa, 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 right? So for me, I think it's ours to lose if 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 Arteta doesn't try to win everything and he focuses on the EPL because that's what matters. <clears throat> 
Um, yeah, basically, I call the sentiment. I think it's a lot of it. I'd say right now we should not be finishing anything less than second. Um, very cautious about first because City have this ability to like go on like a seventeen game winning streak, something just ridiculous like that. Um, I know there's a whole argument about the game that um, Howland makes City worse or better. I, to me, there's no way Howland can make the team worse. They just, they just didn't. They just didn't <laughs> fill in the pieces that they lost. Um, so they don't, like they don't. They literally no longer have like twenty full time starters for their countries wherever. Like they are, they're becoming more of a normal team than they were before. Uh, but I think it's Arsenal's. I, I think it's. I think City is still in the running. I think the big. It's how we perform against City. So I, I didn't expect us to beat United. I didn't expect us to like spank Tottenham, like all of that. So I've been, I've been really, play, really impressed with the way we're playing, but it's it's really just like, it, it feels like until we do what we've done to all the other top four against City, um, which is where like, even if we, if we take four points out of six, take six points out of six, I'm celebrating the league. We yeah. win one, lose one. <laughs> It's still balanced. We, we get four points, and I think I would be then pretty confident because I wouldn't be able to see us dropping that many points against the competitions that we're co- currently facing in the EPL. I still say I still say Arsenal's leading it. No question about it. I agree. There's to lose. Anything other than winning right now would be massively disappointing. But I agree. I think 17 game streak from City is never impossible. So until the fat lady sings, you play to the like the last day. It doesn't. I don't care. I don't want to. I even want to hear like Arteta's thinking about benching anyone. Like Prem, he's going all in every single game. Like I couldn't care about Europa. I couldn't care about other cups. Like if he wants to make a dent, it's now, and it's the Prem because there's there's probably never going to be a moment like this for a very long time as a maybe. It's either you win it. Or you, you may look at another five years before it happens. You never know if Manchester United next year fire on and you know they, they end up being in the in like the top two. You never know if City end up going on another like a hundred game streak and they win the entire year. Like now there's been consistent victories for Arsenal. It's now to capitalize, go all in for this until the last day. And I think the, the squad is good. I don't see the fatigue as much. I think the as Jeff said, the games are going to be easier down the road. So it's now or never to, to really capitalize on it. So obviously mistakes happen. I don't mind a draw here and there, but like losing right now is just not a freaking option. Like we need to go all in for it. And it's just, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. City comes back really, really strong end of season. So it, it needs to be all in. I'm more concerned on, more concerned on the health of, of Arsenal than, than and, and Arteta's mindset because Arteta comes from the pep mentality. And Pep tends to overthink things. So I hope Arteta doesn't overthink things when the moment is needed. I saw versus the game versus Man U. I was like, okay, 1-1, 2-2. All right, let's see where it goes. And I was a little bit bit worried. I was like, is he going to do something crazy? But he was spot on and he did a really good job. So if we keep on it, I think uh, Arsenal will be champs. But let's, let's, let's wait until the fat lady sings. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I've been saying that if City was not in the league... Um, a team like City was not in the league, then uh, I think Arsenal, we could have said Arsenal was definitely the favorites because over and across Europe, I can't really see too many teams that's playing the type of football that Arsenal is playing right now. Um, it's different, just, right? It's the every, Prem, right? It's the Prem. Yeah. Right? It's, you're forced so, to be at a high level all the time. Because I think if you compare apples to apples, like Napoli is doing an incredible job in, in the Italian league. Like really, I'd be very scared of Napoli right now if I had to face them. They're, they're a really good club. They're mm-hmm. playing amazingly. You can't take it away from them. If you look at the La Liga, it's a little bit balanced. If you look at Paris Saint-Germain, it's not like anyone's contesting them. Um, and then you look at Bayern, and you're like, well, Bayern is always a dark horse. You don't really cast them out. So apples to apples, yeah. yeah. Arsenal's playing at You're right. Level, I guess you but, can't really transfer yeah. the performances from one no. league to another because it's all but, based on who's in front of you. Yeah. Um, and also, like you said, too, I think this is a great opportunity for Arsenal because, you know, Liverpool and Chelsea – they're giving other teams an opportunity, right? Not how often do you see the likes of Liverpool and Chelsea sitting middle of the table? So that's creating that opportunity for other teams to um, to go up the table as well. So, and no, it's a great I guess point. It's a great of... point on it's a great point on Liverpool. No one would have thought Liverpool would have been like this. I would have definitely not thought it. I, I would never would have thought that 
Tuchel would have been uh, would have been fired, and Porter, Harry Potter, would have been the coach. I didn't know <laughs> that, that was going to happen, <laughs> but it is what it is. Reminds yeah. me of that season where um the one that Leicester won, which was like in a weird way. Tottenham and Liverpool at the time, both. That was like, that was their, Tottenham really, because Liverpool, they came back. But that was like Tottenham's opportunity there. And it was just like, they, like this could have, Ben King could have signed another like 200 years and nobody would care because it had his, his league. But this, to Eve's point, it's like, this feels like, it's like we have to do it now because next year it's like, Chelsea's recruited the whole world. And then Nkunku's joining them in the, in the, in the, in the summer just to, like that's just a crazy squad. Next year, I think the EPL is going to be even stronger. I think there can be like a three, four man horse race. Um, and so it's like this year, and City's still in the mix. So it's almost like, yeah, it's like forget every other tournament and then just focus on this. The only thing that really worries me is injuries. We've been really lucky with injuries this yeah. year. Like Saka typically goes down at some point in the season. Partey is usually gone for like three months. Uh, now Jesus is gone and I think we recruited well with Troy side but yeah. like it's uh, my main concern is like everyone goes down uh, <laughs> or Partey goes down it's like that's that's what we're going to see that that Casemiro Matamani dr- drop in, in levels and I'm not yeah. sure if we can they, really make it through that they, they are trying to recruit a midfield because Arteta has noted that that was an area was a backup winger um, in the event that Martinelli or Saka goes down, because that is what happens. And I'm surprised, like, Partey, like, including the World Cup, I'm surprised dude hasn't gone down. I think the, the, his, his drop in form, like, I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that he might be carrying something, and he, and he hasn't, and it's, you know, everyone is sort of kind of, like, letting it go because of this run. Um, and so I, that's why I'm, I'm scared about tomorrow. I'm scared about um, the, the Europa. And, and, and once that starts happening, you're going to see a lot of people just start dropping like flies um and and i said it our, our arsenal i said last week arsenal and manchester united's problem is death because a drop in quality once the bench comes in is something that you you only see in a mid-table team um but we are Arteta has noted i can't i can't recall who they're looking for i think there's there's a guy um something something so there's a guy in in um on real sociedad who is right now um you know he's 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 in the form of his life he's actually the best midfielder in uh, stat wise in la liga this year that Ar- arteta is trying to bring in um so if that happens i think that'll be a good acquisition um but i, I completely agree arsenal's it, arsenal's death issue i mean it could be next weekend it could be tomorrow but it it, it could come about very Mendy? Ugly head. are you talking about zuba mendy yes yes, yes. him yeah everybody yeah. wants like to say mendy, 23 years old people think it was ota mendy because no, no, like Zubi Mendy. Yeah. But he's like, he's a really good Spanish player. But yeah, you guys are playing, playing, like, playing close to your dad tonight, right? So you, No comments. Like, no comment, Jeff. No comment. <laughs> good, good luck. <laughs>